please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Let's move on to the big CNBC TV 18 exclusive that Nigel D'Souza caught up with Neeraj Singhal, the MD of Bhushan Steel over the weekend to discuss the minute details on the original debt taken, the ordinance and why did the asset actually turn into a distressed one. Listen in. The original debt was not so high and uh, when the plant, sta the, uh, the, uh, the plant started in uh, production in 2014, Unfortunately, uh, by the time the plant started in 13 uh, and for, uh, in financial year 13 14, there was a very uh, a big downturn in the industry and there was a lot of dumping happening and all that. Uh, the steel industry was in the worst phase and unfortunately, Bhushan Steel got caught in a wrong cycle. It was after 20 years, the first greenfield steel plant had come in India. Mm. Uh, uh, before that, only JSW uh, and SR uh, and ISPAT was the uh, which had come in early 90s. So this was the first greenfield plant which had come uh, uh, in the uh, last 20 years, and uh, uh, we uh, the Bhushan still got caught in a wrong cycle mm -hmm. by by the time it got fully commissioned and all that. So uh, and there's a lot of interest overhang within this number. So and there's a lot of unpaid interest. So it is not that the money was borrowed for so much. It was it, there's a lot of interest unpaid interest in this. As per your records, what is the last debt uh, that uh, you know you had taken note of? Uh, and if out of that, you know what is the unpaid interest part of that? So based on earlier uh, uh, numbers which were uh, being discussed with banks uh, by us when we were in the restructuring stage, mm -hmm. we were not uh, offline as far as the capex of the uh, plant was concerned. It was not that uh, the company had uh, put in huge capex. I think the borrowed amount would be not uh, the uh, the uh, would not be more than thirty between thirty to thirty five thousand crores the borrowed amount, and the rest is all interest. Has there been any communication, uh, you know, any proposal that you've put forth uh, to the bank? If you could tell us what's going on there uh, after that ordinance said that the promoters will be barred from uh, bidding for their own assets. There was an ordinance which came in early November mm -hmm. uh, where the uh, there was a bar on the promoters to bid for the company. And that really uh, put us, put all the promoters into a lot of uh, uh, a shock situation because the situation uh, where the uh, companies, uh, I would not like to comment on other sectors, but especially on the steel sector, this was very well aware by the government and uh, the P, uh, and everybody concerned, all the stakeholders, that the steel industry was not uh, doing well for the last three to four years. All the steel companies, except two, uh, which is Tata Steel and JSW Steel, uh, are uh, are in black, and all the rest of the steel companies, including Steel Authority, have been in the red for last uh, three to four years and it was a big shock uh, for everybody that the uh, because because of the circumstances the uh, companies were uh, uh, in default mm. and uh, a lot of companies were going ahead with the uh, a lot of companies were going ahead with the restructuring because the banks had realized and the government also had realized that uh, there was there was a, a sectoral problem of the steel in the steel sector, okay. and uh, but unfortunately, I think we came in a, a total uh, different situation of the IBC code, which came in uh, June uh, by the RPI, mm. and all the steel companies, the large steel companies, were put into that. All right. And at that time, it was not uh, envisaged that the promoters would be uh, barred from uh, bidding, but now it was. So. Uh, that stays like that.